I want to talk about a player, a player that we all love. Uh, here he is, Bradley Close. Look at the man there in his long sleeve. How glorious does he look on a sunny day on a grand final against the Swannies? Kicking goal after goal after goal, <laughs> tapping it to Selwood uh, for the check side. But uh, uh, Jake, it's, it's Brad Close's 100th game this weekend. Feels like he's been around at this club forever. I feel like he's been a 150 game player, but uh, he's barely missed a beat since uh, 2020. Um, he played his, uh, I'll, I'll take you back a little bit though. He, he played his uh, 50th game against St Kilda at round one, 2022. Uh, he had 14 disposals and a goal that game. Pretty standard uh, closey top stats, really. Um, his first game, his debut game, was against Fremantle, round eight, 2020, the, the grand final year of 2020. Uh, he had 14 disposals and one goal in that game as well. Typical Brad Close numbers. Um, he's actually played seven games against Port Adelaide uh, with, with four wins and three losses, Jake. Uh, so let's hope it's five wins and three losses after Thursday night. Some thoughts on on Brad Close, his career, uh, what you'd like to see from him on the weekend. Show him a bit of love. Yeah, I absolutely. I think there's been a, I've been, I've seen a bit of talk on Twitter at times this season about the Brad Close, he's, he's not in our best 23. He should be dropped, you know, to, got to drop him. You know, he's totally out of form. Look, I, I think you can never underrate the fact that when different players come into the team, it can adjust the role and the production of, of, of others. Like Brad Close for a long time was, you know, our best gut running, pressuring, clever in space type sort of half forward, you know, wing, whatever sort of role you wanted to stick him in. Um, and now he's got help. Now he's got Sean Manor. Now, now he's got Ollie Dempsey. Um, you know, Tyson Stengel's coming to the side. Brian Myers is in career best form. So Brad Close doesn't have to be, you know, one of those lone, you know, two or three um, hands anymore um, doing what Geelong need in terms of the pressure. Now, I think he's pro- it's, it's fair to say he's been quieter, particularly the last four weeks. Um, you know, just what, what's he key? He hasn't kicked a goal the last four weeks. Uh, he's only laid four tackles in four games. So that that is quieter. But I will say he's averaging on the season a career high goals per game average. 1.09 is the highest of his career. Um, so, look, I think that he's exactly the type of player who might bob up and, and get back to his best. I mean, he's a seasoned campaigner. Uh, he's played a lot of finals um, for this Cats team. Um, something I thought was funny just when you were talking about the Port, you know, thing like where we lose those those games to port the um the two qualifying finals it's so weird isn't it that the, the narrative around geelong is you know the straight set cats and you know we lose qualifying finals to port in 2020 and 2021 and we end up in a grand final in 2020 and, and a prelim in 2021 um 2022 we go all the way to the flag so it it yeah it's it's funny isn't it how narratives stick around but brad close i i love him i i think I often make this comparison, so sorry if um, Hoops Crew viewers and listeners are sick of me making it, but there's a little bit of the New England Patriots to Geelong in that Chris Scott, to me, loves to collect very smart role players. He loves to to pick guys who will do their job and make smart decisions and clever decisions. And I think Brad Close is 100% one of those players. We've got a bunch of them in our team. Um, he's just so clever. He's just so smart. You very rarely see him take possession and get caught in possession. He's the he's the master of the the volleyball spike or the flick out to someone else. The the Selwood goal in 2022's um, GF stands out as as you know put that on a statue. Um, the Brad Close ruck tap almost um, in the contest to Selwood. Um, so no, I, I love him. I think he's a quintessential Chris Scott player, a player that sometimes we go is out of form or what's he doing? And I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, probably out of quiet four games, but I think he can get back to his best 100%. He's a, I, I love the fact that we, we're so obsessed as Cat supporters about Brad Close wearing the long sleeves. Every time uh, we come into the early part of the season, it's a nice 27-degree day, round one or something like that, or it's a – Preseason game. Well, wait, hang on. Where's, where's Brad's sleeves? Uh, he's where he's gone. He's he's got the guns out. Uh, 
Hopefully, Brad wears the long sleeves for the rest of his career. It's a bit like Cam Guthrie in his hair. The sleeves and the hair, uh, it, it makes the magic, Jake. It's what we need. Uh, I, um, I'm i really happy for him uh, to 100 games. Um, he's he's not the most um, charismatic bloke at the club, uh, it's fair to say. He doesn't sort of give a lot of expression. Um, but I do want to mm. just mention something that really has stuck with me for the last uh, couple of years since – since the grand final win against Sydney, and not so much in the game, but the Kaji Greaves medal night, the best and fairest for the Cats uh, a few days after that. And Joel Selwood and, and Britt, his partner, came up on stage and were and Joel was sort of saying his farewell to the to the people in the crowd and the members and all that. And um, made a special mention of Brad Close and um, in, in his sort of farewell remarks. He was saying that he felt like the club was in really good hands because there's blokes like Brad Close that will never let the standards of this club drop. Um, and he talked about a story where he was lifting weights, um, shifting some tin um, in pre-season or whatever, and and, um, and Brad come up to him and said, "Hang on, mate, what's going on? You, you sort of you haven't got you haven't got your normal weights on there. You're, you're slacking off a little bit, are you?" And, and Joel's like, he was just pretty keen to sort of take it a little bit easy, and, and Brad was like giving him a hard time about uh, doing that. So um, I, I I think Brad's probably one of those ones we won't hear a lot about, and we won't. We won't see a lot doing heaps of media and so forth. And even when he does, you probably won't get a lot out of him. But you know, I think he's the type of guy around the club that that really will, will hopefully carry this, um, you know, be that sort of connecting piece for years to come. Um, you know, that guy who came in in 2020 and unfortunately was pushed out of the side for a, for a certain um, Gary Ablett Jr. <laughs> um, fair enough, I suppose. But uh, close, he was having a pretty good year that year, really, in his first year at the club. Um, but, yeah, got pushed out on, in time for finals and, uh, and didn't play again um, after I think round 17. There was a shortened season that that year because of COVID, but um, didn't play um, when the finals came around. Um, but yeah, absolutely, he's been a mainstay in this side. Really has missed barely a game um, since since uh, the start of 2021, um, and it's just looking for. Hopefully, we'll we'll um, we'll find a bit of form again. He's as you sort of mentioned, he's gone a little bit quiet with goals in recent weeks, but um, you'd think he's going to come back. He's just built for finals. He just does all those little one percenters, Jack, that you talked about, the little taps, the little, the little volleyball spikes. Um, I think he's ready to go. I'm really looking forward to see what he can deliver on the big stage. Um, but, yeah, that, that Joel Woodsellwood speech really sort of resonates to me. Um, is there any sort of um, other sort of memories you've got of, of um, Closey or, or things? You, any final thoughts you want to say uh, ahead of his 100th on the weekend? Um, look, it, it's sort of hard to pick him out. Like, I, I feel like in a weird way, um, he, he, he's just, he's all about his business. Like he just yeah. goes about it. Like, like, yes, he does sometimes do really exciting things. Um, actually, if you go to the game against the Crows this season, um, he won a really important chase down tackle. Um, late in that game where we're pressing to try and take the lead and and the Crows are trying to exit their back 50, which they'd done really well all night. And I'm sure it was Brad Close who had just a vicious rundown tackle from behind to win a holding the ball decision and to put it back inside um, Ford 50. I think it, it's it's more than just one thing in, in the sense that it's 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 a it's a trait that he has is that I feel like Brad Close so often takes the right option. If he's got the ball, you know, on the edge of 50 or or inside 50 and he knows he can't score, he he spots someone else up and and I love that about him. Um so yeah, I suppose that's the thing that sticks with me is that I I back him 9 times out of 10 to do the right thing um in the right spot. Good luck on the weekend, Brad. We know you're going to go well. Um hopefully you kick Another four goals or something like that. <laughs> That'll be nice. Uh, get the cats over the line. Uh, That'll be fantastic.